Oh my king, where is my queen? Come forth now with haste. For the love of Gog, stop it! I just need you to to stop doing impressions and go kill monsters for me while I don't even need to draw my weapon. You got it, boss! Damn right I'm the boss! You want us to kill Goss? No, not Goss. I mean, you can do Goss. I'm saying boss, not Goss. Alright, we'll kill Goss! Oh! Oh my god, leave me alone, you little bastards! Hello there, my fellow hunters! How do you feel about having your pair of palicos kill any monster for you real quick without you having to even draw your weapon? Oh yes, it's a lot of fun. Now back in World of Night Spawn, I had a series of builds like this after I came up with the Pokemon Palico AFK Auto hunting style, but it has never been better than it is in Rise. Honestly, I'd go as far to say is you can treat this as just the 15th weapon and actually just make it your hunting style. At least when solo, it is that effective and it is that entertaining. So, as you can see, the Palicos really are doing a number on uh, Mr. Goss, and you can keep an eye on that as we progress through this. But essentially, what is the goal? Well, we take two offensive Palicos, we make them as absolutely powerful as they can be, and all we need to do is kind of watch them kill the monster. Now, everything that I'm about to show you and tell you and set you up with you can do while also killing the monster normally, and then it's even faster, but, you know, to prove the point, today is all about pure Palico. Well, pure Palico and Kunai. Because this time around in Rise, we have an infinitely useful, spammable, ranged, tiny chip damage that lets us, you know, keep busy while we watch our Palicos kill the monster. So I suppose, truly, the 15th weapon is Double Cat Kunai Attack. Anyway, the first quick question to answer is that, yes, Palamutes do less damage than Palicos. Honestly, the Palamutes don't really do anything better except transport than the Palicos. Sorry, Palamutes. I really, really am sorry. Now, there is a few neat things you can do with them, and we will perhaps explore that in the future, but for now, it is all about the cat. The attack cat. But which attack cat to get? That is the attack cat question. Well, the answer is either, of course, Bombardier or Fighter as the two offensive options, and they both bring really potent abilities to the table. So when it comes to the Fighter, well, we get Rousing Roar, which is a big attack boost to you and the other Palico. Obviously, we don't care about that for ourselves right now, but it is very noticeable. The Power Drum is also a big attack boost for the other Palico. And then while in Furious, the fighter is just absolutely ludicrous amounts of damage. Fleetfoot Feet is fine, and well, when Assault is honestly a lot of damage too, if you uh, nicely element match the Palico's weapon to the monster, which we'll get to. So all in all, uh, well, Mr. Cat here... Hello there. ...is a right proper good Palico. And incidentally, this is the five moves that you want for maximum offensive fighter. But the thing is, you can't ignore the Bombardier. They come equipped with one hell of an arsenal. The Giga Barrel Bombay is the single biggest amount of damage a Palico can do. It hits like a truck against everything. Fine. The Anti Monster Mine is essentially mini Giga Barrel Bombay. And then the Zap Blast Spinner is, well. But again, each one is a fairly nice chunk of damage. But of course, you can have the middle three abilities on any given Palico. So why have we just gone full explosion on one and a little bit more buffy on the other? Well, as you might have guessed, the best combination here is to have a fighter and a bombardier. 
Two fighters is the worst, two bombardiers is a bit better, but one of each is the sweet spot because the fighter, while pumping out respectable damage, constantly buffs the bombardier. And the bombardier's explosions are universally just huge hits against the monsters. They essentially just ignore what the monster is about and doing and blow it the hell up. And they get the biggest bonus from getting those attack buffs from the fighter. So in tandem, it really is a whole greater than the sum of its parts. Essentially, the bottom line here is imagine the fighter palico as your element cat and the bombardier as your raw damage cat. And the element cat makes the bombardier's raw damage way higher and the bombardier creates loads of flinch and trap openings for your element cat to use his pure DPS on the monster effectively. It's a really nice bit of synergy and I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of testing, a lot of numbers and this always comes out on top as the combo to go for. For an actual powering you up as a hunter, hunting normally with two cats, two fighters is best for two times the buffs going up on you. But for a palico kill monster, well, you need that bombardier in the mix. Then equipment wise, that's quite simple. You want the bombardier to have the highest raw palico weapon and you want the fighter to have the palico weapon with the most amount of element in the element the monster you're hunting is weakest to. And then when assigning skills to your palico, well for the fighter you want crit, then attack, then any kind of survivability, and on the bombardier attack, then crit, then any kind of survivability, and also make sure that you actually go on your behavior modifier setting and set the palicos to target large monsters only. This way they won't get distracted and they'll spend the entire hunt actually killing the monster as hard as possible. So, probably took way longer than I needed to to explain that, but haha, <laughs> ah, we're, we're moving on up here. Okay, so there is one last extra bit of, uh, well, spice that makes this all work, and that is the felvine. Use the felvine! And the felvine, use the felvine, is potent. Use the felvine! Sorry, it's all I can... It's all I can hear when I read that, you know, like to the tone of Do a barrel roll! Is it just me? I, I, maybe? Okay, I'll move on. This makes both your palicos go absolutely psychopath. Essentially, imagine it just speeds them up. Their cooldowns on their moves come up faster, they use them more frequently, they attack more aggressively, they absolutely savage the thing. This has a huge cooldown on it. Like, absolutely massive six and a half minutes or so yeah you're gonna be using this two three times a hunt but while this is on you want the monster to be in its most vulnerable state you want it trapped you want it in goss's case he's enraged with ice swords out so he's got his big juicy hit zones in front of him and essentially just let them go absolutely crazy on the monster Unlike me, in this hunt, where both times I used it after the first, Goss immediately left the zone. Haha, <laughs> no thanks, not happening! But in any case, use this little damage bomb when you're confident the monster is going to be here and vulnerable for the full duration of it. That full duration being about a minute and a half. So not the hugest window, but it's where a huge chunk of your damage will come from. Now, as you're probably seeing, the main playstyle here is throw kunai and then watch as the monster dies to your palicos. There's a little bit more nuance, but before we can get into that nuance, we need to go over the set. Weapon! This is perhaps the most important part of the build. You need to choose a weapon that has palico rally upon it. This makes your palicos harder to kill, but more importantly, it makes them do more damage. Now, the weapons that have this aren't the most powerful things in the world. For me, with Greatsword, well, you can get the Azuchi uh, blade, which does indeed have it, but you can transfer the ramp up then over to the Nagakuga tree via Mr. Poison Serpent Blade, and then thus we have a Nagakuga Greatsword with Buddy Rally. That is very, very good, because as I said at the beginning, you can just play this normally with the Palicos doing their thing, you don't have to stay sheathed and throw kunai, of course. Which obviously makes this so much faster and even better, but again, I'm proving the point that how good Palicos are with minimal input from you. 
But this means that you don't have to completely cripple yourself offensively to get this ramp up skill. It also means you don't have to allocate space in your armor for a skill like Palico Rally, which is obviously gone because this ramp up exists. So that's fantastic. And while we're on weapon, I'm not using Hunting Horn to sit there buffing my Palico, because again, I want to have the point prove that without any weapon drawing input from me, they do an absolutely fantastic job. But yes, you could totally get your Hunting Horn out and serenade your cats as they go crazy and that would be a nice little buff for them attack and affinity songs and so on and so forth the armor set then is definitely much easier to come by and honestly you can achieve these skills in many different ways all you actually need is five wide range and then you're, you're done that that kind of is the minimal requirement here, but I would recommend that you add to that recovery up, uh, free meal, and speed eating. This is because we will essentially be acting as support for the Palico. This is key here, especially the wide range, because what you're going to want to do is give your Palicos a Mega Demon Drug and a Mega Armor Skin when the hunt begins, or at least when you engage the monster. This is a permanent quest long nice little bump for them and really helps out. Then I would recommend at the start of each zone of fighting, you have yourself a Might Seed and a, a bit of Demon Powder, and you can also go for your Adamant Seed and Adamant Powder too, just to give them the best chance. Then essentially the playstyle to expand on it is just watch the Palico's health. If it gets at about 70% or lower, just have a healing potion, top them up, and jobs are good in because we've lent into free meal, because we've lent into speed eating, staying alive yourself along with keeping them up is an absolute doddle. If you happen to get hit, which is already fairly difficult to achieve because you are throwing kunai, and by the way, for this throwing kunai, you might want to get the dango skill which makes the kunai do more damage because, I mean, why not? It, it really is just fun to just constantly throw the kunai while your palicos kill them, and of course it lets you go have a little chat with your mogi. I'm the best there is at what I do. And that's always good. In any case, uh, you uh, want to uh, keep them happy and healthy because if they're spending time healing themselves with their own health potions, which they will start to do under 50% health, they're not spending that time killing the monsters. So yeah, just keep an eye on their health and uh, keep it topped up. You yourself should barely ever get hit because you're at range throwing kunai and mostly dodging, but if you do, again, just top yourself up instantly and quickly and you're essentially at no risk of dying ever from anything as nothing's going to one-shot you currently in rise so this is really relaxed and fun to operate and to really stress how simple this is to pull off and how much the armor set at the moment isn't the biggest factor well this is the template that already essentially does all you need it to do now granted my talisman here is giving me three ranks of wide range so you have to adjust for your own collection but look a weapon with a buddy rally then these two bits talisman and waste give me the recovery up finish wide range and and a bit of free meal to one slot. So there's really not much left to get and there's four spare armor pieces with all their slots to do it. So you could use this for more offensive, more normal build skills and as I said, fight with your palicos and then suddenly it's really ridiculous on top of how really ridiculous it already is. Other than that, you just cruise along. Use the felvine at a good opportunity every time it's off cooldown. Watch the monster, stay near it, let the palicos do their thing, throw the kunai at it, and wait for it to slowly, slowly die. Though not too slowly. Obviously, I would recommend capturing, because why not? It's much, much quicker to end the hunt that way, unless you need a part that's specifically better from carving. But this gosarag took around the 17-minute mark, which is obviously slower than a normal hunt-ish. Gosarag normally dies to me in about 8 minutes, so it's about double. But the thing is, I'm not helping. Even with this set that has essentially no offensive skills, if I was using my Naga Greatsword and hitting the monster normally, this would easily have been 10 minutes, which I think is fantastic considering all my extra offensive clout is coming from Palicos and not armor skills. So you could really hybridize this set, this playstyle, and end up with something that really kicks ass with both you and your Palicos working in a triple tag team of just power. And I think that is absolutely wonderful. 
So there you have it, guys. The Palicos in Rise are incredible, and they are incredibly good at incredibly destroying monsters. You can use this really against any of them, and it will work out absolutely fine. And it just feels a lot of fun to play, because you are actively using the kunai, you're monitoring things, but obviously you could also just stand there and heal every now and then, and just let the palicos kill it, you barely have to pay attention. It's the most automated monster killing you could imagine. You just don't need to care about what it's doing, and there is a lot of goodness there too. Let me know what you think then, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. A good boy. <laughs>